Hi, I'm Rich Vogel. Hi, and I'm Adam Doan. We're both board certified neurophysiologists from just outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And we're also co-founders and co-chairs of the NAST section on intraoperative neurophysiological monitoring. Uh, this podcast series is about neural monitoring and covers a, a range of topics um, aimed at optimizing patient care, decreasing costs, or optimizing operating room efficiency. So today we're going to uh, switch up the format a little bit. Um, still the same uh, two, two hosts, but uh, this is going to be uh, the first of a series of uh, podcasts that have an interview format. Uh, so today I am actually going to be interviewing uh, Rich um, uh, and he, we're going to talk about professional societies and where they uh, focus their efforts, what roles they play in, in patient care. Uh, Rich is a, a perfect person to kick this off because he's the immediate past president of the American Society of Neurophysiologic Monitoring. So Rich. Who are the main neuromonitoring societies in the U.S. and abroad, and what are the typical demographics of their membership? So uh, I can name a few of them, um, probably all of them, because there's not a lot. But uh, I think the main one um, is is the one that I was president of, uh, the ASNM. It was founded in 1990, really to serve what was then the emerging field of neuromonitoring. It is the only neuromonitoring specific society in the United States, and it's the oldest in the world. Um, historically, the membership of that society was limited to the surgeons and PhD neurophysiologists who founded the field and the profession of neuromonitoring. Uh, but, but now it's uh, very much a, uh, open to everybody who's interested in neuromonitoring, which turns out to be a really diverse group of people including neurophysiologists, neurologists, technologists, surgeons, anesthesiologists, and even electrode manufacturers. Um, the, the next one would be ASET, the Neurodiagnostic Society. This is primarily composed of technologists, and they have a very broad focus on all of neurodiagnostics. Um, only a small portion of their membership would be uh, very much focused on neuromonitoring. And the same thing is true for the next society, which is the American Clinical Neurophysiology Society, ACNS. They are composed primarily of neurologists um, and who have a very broad focus on all of neurodiagnostics and a very small percentage of their members would be focused on neuromonitoring. Uh, they tend to work mostly with uh, CMS on regulatory aspects such as billing and coding. And then the three that I can think of outside of the United States that would be relevant to discuss would be um, the ISIN, which is the International Society of Interoperative Neurophysiology. Uh, they um, are kind of all over the world and have um, uh, a fair amount of surgeon members. Um, because outside of the U.S., a lot of surgeons kind of helped to found the field of neuromonitoring. Uh, you have CANM in Canada, which is the Canadian Association of Neurophysiologic Monitoring. And, of course, we have INSA, um, which is probably the, the newest, but certainly um, emerging uh, for those who live in, in the APAC uh, region. They're the Interoperative Neurophysiology Society of Asia Pacific, INSA. So those are the major players, but the three in the U.S. would be the ASNM, uh, the Neurodiagnostic Society, ASET, and the ACNS. Got it. Um, so which ones are you a member of? <laughs> So uh, I'm a member of all of them. I think I have a membership problem. Um, I'm also a member of NAS, obviously, too. Uh, I'm a member of all of them. They all have, um, I think, uh, very good benefits uh, to being a member. Uh, my home society is the ASNM. Um, I am uh, personally, uh, my, my interests in practice are laser focused on intraoperative neurophysiology, uh, neural monitoring. And that's where ASNM focuses its efforts. So that's kind of my home society. But I'm a member of all of them. Got it. Yeah, I don't have quite the problem that you do. I'm a member of some of them, but not all of them. Um, but yeah, ASNM is the the one that I'm probably most closely aligned with philosophically. So uh, what about so all these societies? What what do they have in common? 
So as I mentioned, the societies are all over the map in terms of their level of focus or interest on neuromonitoring. Some are very focused. Some just have kind of a little, you know, a, a percentage of their membership that are interested. But one thing that they all have in common, I think, is a holistic view of neuromonitoring and its applications. So here we're talking to a community that is very much to focus on spine care, but neuromonitoring while it may have begun, uh, some may argue, in spine, its applications go way beyond spine. A lot of the work that we do is in brain surgery, in uh, cerebrovascular, cardiovascular surgery, ENT surgery, peripheral nerve surgery. Um, so all of the societies, in the extent to which they're focused on neuromonitoring, they view it holistically in that way. I would say beyond that, um, the things that they have in common is that they're focused on optimizing patient care uh, by um, through a focus on creating guidelines and standards for how neuromonitoring should be performed and interpreted, how modalities are performed. Um, and then they also all, I think, deliver educational content for the purposes of continuing education and professional development of practitioners. So those are the main things that all of them have in common. Right. Um, yeah, so you mentioned, uh, you know, a host of different types of uh, society or, or dis surgical disciplines that use neuromonitoring. So whether it's spine or any one of those other disciplines, does the, do the neuromonitoring societies often attract people from the surgical community? Yeah, I think it's hit or miss. Um, I, I would say not often. Um, I know the ASNM is is very open to uh, to uh, surgeons being members and participating, and I I go back to the fact that they were in part founded by surgeons and people who work in the deformity world probably know um, the the name Clyde Nash. He was one of the founding members of of the ASNM. Um, among among other surgeons and, and neurophysiologists and and some surgeons who have uh, who are members of the ASNM remain members uh, to this day. Um, I'd say that outside of that, there's probably not much surgeon engagement in the other societies, with the exception of the ISIN, which is I, I think it's a, a great place if you work internationally and you want to be involved in neuromonitoring. It's a great place to uh, to, to get engaged because they uh, they have meetings all over the world. And so you'll probably find that they'll be uh, at some point uh, close to where you live. And then I guess, um, you know, in uh, certainly in Asia Pacific, INSA would be a place to look if you want to get involved in neuromonitoring. monitoring. Uh, but in the U.S., I think the ASIN would probably be the place where you'd be, probably be most kind of uh, integrated as, as a member and really engaged. Right. And you, you touched on this a little bit already, but as the, the past president of the ASNM, can you speak a little bit more about the goals of the society and where they try to focus their efforts? Sure. So the main focus of ASNM is on education and kind of professional development. Um, and uh, I'm really kind of proud of, of this society. Um, it, it really uh, has some of the world's leading experts in neuromonitoring. They're not only members of the ASNM, but serve as faculty in webinars, in uh, symposia, in the annual meeting, and people come from all over the world just to hear uh, what these people have to say. Um, so it's, it's really the best around when it comes to education. Aside from education, the ASNM is generally focused elevating competency for providers, advocating for patients, representing the profession, and just otherwise maintaining its commitment to diversity, ethical conduct, and inner society collaboration. Um, you, you mentioned guidelines before. I guess, you know, probably specifically in regards to the ASNM, or if you want to take it outside the ASNM, um, what sort of guidelines are there for the, the neuromonitoring community that exists in these societies? Yeah, I think this is one place where I think there's a lot of collaboration between societies, but um, I'll at least talk about the 
to 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 say also that um, that it's not done in a vacuum. So when they create um, various guidelines, there's input and feedback from a variety of other societies. In fact, I know guidelines that we've generated in the past we send to to NAS for comment um, because it it affects people in in NAS whenever we make guidelines. But we have guidelines for um, for uh, the supervising professional. So if you are involved in in um, in the supervision and interpretation of neural monitoring, there are guidelines that that we've published for how that should be done. There are um, there are other uh, guidelines or aspects of supervision um, and how that should be done. And then we have guidelines on individual modalities. Um, where they apply, how they should be performed. So examples are we have guidelines on motor of potentials, SSCPs, EMG, reflex tests, et cetera. So those are the types of things that, that we've worked on in terms of clinical practice guidelines. All right, thank you. And then is there a lot of intersocietal collaboration? So you, there's these different societies. It sounds like they each have their own, you know, unique not unique, but um, uh, they, they have their own scopes. Um, uh, audience that participates in, in within them, but is there a lot of collaboration between these societies? And if not, what, what would that actually look like? Yeah, so the answer is yes and no. So in the various neural monitoring and neurodiagnostic societies, um, I think they work really well together to collaborate, whether that's in the context of co-hosting meetings or publishing guidelines. Um, but there hasn't been much collaboration with societies outside of the, the niche of, of neural monitoring, neurodiagnostics. I think, Adam, what you and I are doing right now in NAS is a big leap forward for inner society collaboration outside of neuromonitoring. Um, now, this isn't a formal collaboration between like ASNM and NAS, it's more informally, but it gives us the opportunity as neuromonitoring practitioners and providers uh, to give the spine community uh, education and resources from experts in the neuromonitoring community. And I think it would be great if um, we could get more spine specialists engaged in the neuromonitoring societies like ASNM to lend their experience and their expertise in spine surgeries to the folks who, who monitor those surgeries. I think uh, for any surgeons that are interested in getting involved in the neuromonitoring community, uh, our NAS section, the section on neuromonitoring, is, a, is really a great place to start. Um, we have some surgeons in our section. Uh, we actually have a pretty good variety of individuals, um, we have neurologists, neurophysiologists, um, um, uh, uh, surgeons, and um, that, that's just a great place to start. And then I think in this section, certainly uh, find Adam and I on the NAS database and reach out. Um, we, we can get you involved. And if you want to get involved in neural monitoring societies behind NAS, we can certainly point you in the right direction. All right, Rich, uh, I appreciate your time and sharing your, your knowledge on the various societies that exist out there for, for neuromonitoring. Thank you. Yeah, of course.